this is question 8a, part 2. We have the three vertices, again, uh, of the triangle, P, Q and R. And we have the important information from the first part of the question, uh, which is the equation of the perpendicular bisector to line uh, side RQ. The question asks us to find two perpendicular bisectors. So the first one we did in part one, the perpendicular bisector to side RQ. And this second part of question AA, we want to find the perpendicular bisector to side PR. So again, I'm not going to draw the whole triangle, just the side that we're interested in. Now, the perpendicular bisector, uh, perpendicular bisector, first of all, the word bisect means that we're going to meet this line in the middle, cutting it in half. That's what bisect means. And perpendicular means that it's going to be at right angles. So the green line here is the perpendicular bisector, the one that we want to find uh, the equation for. As we can see, it's meeting the side of the triangle at a right angle. And these double dashes here indicate that both these lengths are the same, which means that this red point must be the midpoint. In order to find the equation of the green line, we need a point and the gradient of the green line. So we can't work out the gradient directly because we only have one point. And again, in fact, we don't even have the midpoint at this stage. So what we will do is try and work out the gradient. Now we can do this if, first of all, we work out the gradient of PR. Working out the gradient of PR, then we can use the uh, formula for per, uh, the gradient formula for perpendicular lines. M1 times M2 equals minus 1. So if we can work out the gradient of PR, then finding M2 is pretty straightforward. So first of all, the gradient formula for the line PR. We have M, the gradient of PR, equals Y2 minus Y1 divided by X2 minus X1. So substituting in our values, and remember this time we're working with points P, point R. So Y2 is going to be 0 minus Y1, which is 3. Divided by X2 minus X1, so X2 is 3. Take away X1, which is 2. So we have 0 minus 3, which is minus 3. And 3 minus 2, which is 1. Minus 3 over 1, the gradient is minus 3. So the gradient of the line PR is minus 3. What we want to do now is use this formula to give the gradient of the green line. So the gradient of the second line, M2, is just equal to the original gradient, inverted, and the sign changed. So we had 3 minus 3 over 1. So if we turn that upside down, that gives us a third. It was originally a negative number, so that means our gradient is positive. So the gradient of the line shown in green here, the perpendicular bisector, is one third. What we need to do now is find a point to use, and the point is going to be this red one, the midpoint of PR. So we'll call this midpoint B. And B, the midpoint, is going to be X1 plus X2 over 2 and Y1 plus Y2 
over to. So remember, we want the midpoint of PR, so we're using points P and R. Substituting the values for X1, X2, Y1, and Y2, that gives us 2 plus 3 over 2, and 3 plus 0 over 2. So that gives us a midpoint of 2 plus 3 is 5 over 2, and 3 plus 0 is 3, and that's also over 2. Now, there's no point in changing those to decimals or anything else, so that's the way we should leave our midpoint. So now we have a gradient and a point for the perpendicular bisector. So what we can do now is go ahead and work out the equation of the line. So before we start to do the working for this part, I'm going to clear some space. So if we keep the important information, the point we're going to use and the gradient, we can now substitute those into the equation of a straight line. So that's y minus b equals m x minus a, where a and b are these two as shown. So we have y minus b, so that's y minus 3 over 2 equals m, the gradient, which is 1 third. And we have x minus a, which was 5 over 2. So we have uh, some fractions here. The thing that makes this one even more complicated is we have two different denominators. We have two on here and three on here. So in order to uh, get rid of all the same, uh, all the fractions at the same time, what we need to do is multiply through by the smallest number that both two and three goes into. So the smallest number that both two and three goes into is six. So multiplying through by 6, we get 6y minus, and then 6 times 3 over 2 is 18 over 2. 6 times 1 third is 6 over 3. And then we have x minus 5 over 2. So simplifying on the next line, we have 6y minus 18 divided by 2 is 9. Our first fraction disappears. And 6 divided by 3 is 2. And then x minus 5 over 2. So on the next line, we will multiply the bracket out. So we have a 6y minus 9, then 2 times x, which is 2x, and then 2 times 5 over 2, which is 10 over 2. This will now simplify. So we have 6y minus 9 equals 2x minus, and then 10 divided by 2 is 5. So I'm running out of space here, so I'm going to bring the working up here. So we had 6y minus 9 equals 2x minus 5. What I'm going to do is bring everything over to the left hand side. So our 2x and our minus 5, uh, I'll bring them over to the left hand side. So our 6y, our minus 9, and then we have minus 2x and plus 5. There's nothing left on the other side, so that's 0. The minus 9 and the plus 5 will simplify, giving us a final answer.